Just a little bit of advice on how you can make the yang opening posture of the traditional yang form or the yang short form a little bit more whole body. Now, a lot of people will step out and they'll do this. And if you think about it, all it's engaging is that. The rest of your body's just kind of hanging out there like, like dead meat. So try to engage a little bit more of, of your body. If you want to develop it martially, that's important that you start getting whole body skill. And more important, you know, for health, for wellness, for your own internal protection, make sure that you learn to harness your whole body. The experience of it will be so different too. So one thing we can do is think about a manual tire or car jack, a ratcheting action, or you see this also with certain tools, so that when you press down, it leverages, something goes up, and vice versa. Okay, and it's leveraging off that structure. You can leverage off your own structure. What you want to do is get into a comfortable stance. Some people's, you know, if people are so picky about this stuff, and they get, they get into wars over this. About, oh, you know, how do you have to stand? My teacher this, my teacher that. Relax, okay? There's, there's many different ways that you can make a meatloaf. There's no one recipe, so don't get tied into that. Most important thing is, when you're doing your Tai Chi, you've got to have whole body principles going there, because that's the art, what it was founded upon. Okay, the art of Tai Chi was founded upon whole body principles. You do it small, you do it large. You know, just don't crumple up, don't mush yourself, don't smush your energy. Even if you're doing a very tight form, version of yang form, still don't crumple up. People misunderstand that. They think just because something is compact that you crumple up. No, it's still the same thing. Hold your structure. Feel it. Use it, OK? Everything you do should still have structure there. So whether you take a wide stance or a narrow stance, be careful of that. So I'm going to show you two ways. First, I'm going to take a wider stance. Yes, I can stand this wide sometimes in yang form. You can go as wide as you want. There's no rule. Don't put one there. And then think big. Tuck your back. Pull your head up from the bai hui. Point up there. Lift it. Drain your chest. Han qiong. And you sink, arms rise. Tuck. Here's often where people start losing it. They start leaning on over. Tuck. Relax. OK, but it's not crumpled. Just relax. Now, when you pull, when you lift yourself up or push yourself up off the ground, OK, like you're pushing your feet down on something, you slowly rise up. You see that your shoulder seat down, your elbow seat, your wrist seat, and finally your hands. Okay, try that again. <sighs> Drain your chest, relax your breath. All right, I'm going to take more of a medium stance. Shoulders stay down. Push that shoulder energy out your fingers. Relax. Come up. Now, even if you do this small, let's say you have a very narrow stance and you're still doing this, tuck. Okay, so you can even see in small circle forms like Wu Hao or Wu form from Wu Yu Xiang, everything is pulled and stretched even though it's very compact. It's none of this crumpling up stuff. Don't do that to yourself. Think about it. That's not a good energy to put on yourself. It's not healthy. It's not abundant. It doesn't store energy. It just constricts. All it is is like strangling pieces of you all over the place. So remember to stretch and be free, even if you're in a small, compact position. Don't restrict yourself. Relax. Tuck. Feel your tailbone drop. So instead of really think of, thinking of dr putting your tailbone under, because then you wind up doing this, think about you have a heavy weight on the inside hooked area of your tailbone. If you think of the weight here, it's not going to pull you really well. But think of the weight. If this is your tailbone, think of the weight being a little further in. And think of it being like a heavy anchor just rooting you down and, and just making you in that nice straight position, but not like you're over-tucking. Some people get all attached to the idea of tucking and rolling under, and 
they get attached to those words and then they start doing things like this. <laughs> Don't do that to yourself. And also lift your back, lift it out, lift it up, and also di ding, lift your head. The Chinese always say di ding. So imagine that from here, right up on the top of your head, about that area, you have the highest acupoint, the bai hui. It's like the summit. And if you pull that up into the heavens, they say it can raise your shen or spirit energy. And what it does is also tucks your chin and gently tractions your neck. Okay, shoulders down, but you know, as you say shoulders down, but where do you put all that tension? It's got to go somewhere. I mean, tension is just trapped energy. That's all it is. So when you untrap it, where do you put it? Put it out the belly of the fingers. The belly of the fingers is this first chunk right here, the first proximal phalange. Press it down there. If you do that, it will open all the acupoints up. It will stretch your fascia. And even when you're doing a compact, relaxed form, you still have to put that energy somewhere. Don't stuff it in you where it's going to cause you trouble. Okay. <sighs> Let it be free. You are free. You're full of holes. Even your skin, it's full of holes. It's all pores. It's all open. You're connected to the universe. You're part of it. So be part of it. Again, relax. Enjoy, drop that anchor down off your tailbone and raise and feel those two wonderful things working in tandem, this and the pulling down. And you're just relaxing, <sighs> relaxing your chi, relaxing into that. Okay. Side view, very important. Try to look at yourself in a mirror if you can. If you have a large dresser or a closet mirror, you've got to understand what you're doing. If you're out of structure, it's very stressful for your nervous system and your muscles to keep forcing that energy through areas that are constricted. So even if you have scoliosis or something, just the action of trying to put yourself back into a straighter position, that intent, that action, will open you up more. Energy follows thought. OK, so tuck. Now watch what you're going to do here. You're going to come down. Now here it's very easy to start. That's where people lose it. So sit. Drop the anchor, go as low as you can, whatever that is for you, and then relax. As you push back up through the floor, through your head, tuck, drain your chest, keep your shoulders down. Again, come up, tuck, drop, relax. Even if you're doing something very small, you know, very small, you still have to keep your structure. Don't, don't get into that crumpling up business, OK? You're not a piece of trash. Don't crumple yourself up like a piece of used paper. You're better than that. One more time. Lift up your head. <sighs> Drain out your chest. Open your mind to the newness, new possibilities. And tuck, only go as far as you can. Shoulders stay down and stretch it gently out. Not hard, just gentle. Okay, but the energy is there. Anytime you need to call it up, it's there. You just don't, <coughs> you know, just relax. And you don't, you don't get too wimpy, limpy, overly in either. Okay, then from there, anything you do is going to be simple. Keep that structure. Keep that feeling. If you lose that feeling, come back to the beginning again, and then just try to do it again and bring it into your postures. Keep welcoming it into your postures. Keep encouraging it in. The energy needs to be gently coaxed and encouraged. All right, so play with it. No matter what kind of yang form you do or how you do it, just or even whatever kind of tai chi you do, keep that nice energy, that stretch and that feeling and keep that in your mind, too. May it benefit you greatly. I wish you the best.